guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren, thank you so much for watching. Today's a bit of a bonus video. I was lucky enough to get the Berlin 89 collection in PR from Lethal Cosmetics, and this is an interesting collection. It has a couple different parts. So first off, this is the palette, and this is what it looks like inside. It also includes four different gel liners, which I was really excited to try because I've never tried any of the gel liners from Lethal, and I've heard really great things. And then there were two liquid glittering eyeshadows, one in a gold and one in a like really stark kind of pearly white shade. I think this is a challenging collection to use in, in terms of the combination of colors that are in here. It's definitely a palette that I don't think I would have bought if I didn't get in PR, but since I had the opportunity, I was like, I'm gonna challenge myself to go out of my comfort zone, try to create something with this. I've had a lot of palettes in the past that maybe look challenging or I couldn't quite figure out from online pictures, but once I got them in my hands, I kind of understood them a little bit more. Maybe something just wasn't translating online as it did in person. So I thought, let's try it out. And I definitely wanted to do this video for you guys too, because I, I feel like at the the time at least when I'm filming this I haven't seen a ton of videos on this so I know if this is a collection you were maybe wanting if you want swatches or whatever at least I could hopefully offer that for you guys and I thought since my code Lauren with them which is monetarily affiliated it ends this month and it can save you 20% off if you were wanting to shop I thought I might as well get this in here before the coupon ends in case you decide you do want to pick it up so of course no pressure ever to use my code or anything but um yeah that's some of the reasons I wanted to do this I'll have timestamps down below I did this look obviously I'm gonna go through swatches I'm gonna swatch through everything all at once so that'll be its own like block but before I get into that I do want to talk a little bit about the palette itself this is inspired by the fall of the Berlin Wall and they have this little blurb on the website I thought I would just read it out because I did really like this and I think they've really captured the vision that they had for this palette it says inspired by the fall of the Berlin Wall and its role as a reminder that we are not meant to be divided and that all walls built to keep us apart will be torn down in time this palette captures the essence of Berlin in late 80s and 90s, the colorful, the gray, the beautiful and the ugly. It's an homage to our hometown featuring 12 brand new shades. I definitely feel this like late 80s, early 90s vibe. There is something in here, like there's this beauty in here, but it is kind of grungy. It is kind of, I don't want to say ugly, but there's something about this palette that definitely evokes that exact same feeling to me. So I think they nailed it on like what this palette actually looks like from the inspiration. And so that all being said, like seeing the collection, let's say I was talking about this in a new beauty launches, I would definitely say, oh yeah, they nailed that, <laughs> but I don't know if I want to pick that up because it's hard to see how to use this as a cohesive palette on its own. And so a few thoughts so far. I definitely find for me, this is a bit more of a companion palette. There are tons of mattes in here. There really only are three shimmer shades. That's pretty out of my comfort zone. You guys know I'm like into an all shimmer palette. So I really wanted to challenge myself with this one to use this, use other parts of the collection too to create a look. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I don't know, everything about this definitely has like a basic feel. It's a lot of basic matte shades. It's a lot of like primary type colors, how I look at it, you know, with that blue and with the red and even the gold pulls very yellow. So it's like red, blue, yellow, like a pack of crayons. Like I don't tend to gravitate to that. So I thought I would challenge myself and more than anything, of course, get you guys swatches in case you wanted to see it. So let's just get into the swatches and uh, I'll describe the colors. I'm gonna do talk through ones as well. You guys seem to be liking those. So I hope you enjoy those and then we'll get into the demo. Starting off with the Berlin 89 palette. I think the outer packaging is really beautiful and let's get started with the first shade. The first color is called Transit. This is one of the three shimmers in the palette. It is a gray and it has this pink sparkle to it. It's like this very light duochrome. I find this to be a little bit powdery, a little bit dry. And on a swatch, I don't think it looks that amazing. It definitely performs better on the eye and like looks more sparkly on the eye. And that gray base doesn't show up too, too much. Um, you can definitely sheer it out at least. So that is Transit. Definitely not one of my favorite colors, um, surprisingly, I guess. Next is the shade East and West. This is a matte black. I feel like you can build this black up quite dark, so it's not like a charcoal. It will give you that full punch of black. Next in the palette is the shade THF. This is a mid-tone 
tone brown. This one has a bit of like a red kind of base to it. It almost looks like powdered cocoa or something like that type of a brown, but I like that color a lot actually. And last on the first row is the shade Zone. This is like a cobalt blue and again, it is matte. This is a beautiful shade. It's definitely one that kind of adds that Berlin 89 color story to this palette. In the second row, the first shade we have is Republic. This is a really nice mustard yellow. There's something kind of dingy to this yellow. It's not a bright yellow. I really love this shade as well. This is one that I think plays nice and can make this palette more fall appropriate. Next is the shade Block. This is a pinky red. I would say that as much as it's red, it does lean a little bit more pink and a little bit lighter, especially once we get to Sputnik. But before Sputnik, there is the shade Breakthrough. This is like the really special shade in the palette because it is that multi-chrome. This has more of a full metallic finish. It has a black base and then it kind of goes from a reddened maroony pink to gold to green. It's really a beautiful one. I have seen ones like this before, but but nonetheless, it is pretty. And then last for the second row, this is the shade Sputnik. And this is more of a brown maroon red. Um, so compared to Block, it definitely has a little bit more depth to it. It has a little bit more neutrality to it. But I do find they're quite similar. I wish that maybe Sputnik was a little bit deeper or, or something just to differentiate them a little bit more. And moving on to the final row, next we have Prefab. And this is a gray, just a nice classic gray. It's not like too blue toned or Cool, but it definitely isn't warm. Then we have the shade Reunion. This is the last sparkle in the palette. This is just like a yellow gold shimmery shade. Again, I feel like this, like Transit, the other shimmery shade, um, it does perform better on the eye. Like it looks more sparkly on the eye than in a swatch, but just still not one of my favorite sparkles. Then we have the shade Berlin. This is like a pumpkin orange. There's something about this orange as you kind of blend it in, it starts kind of turning pink. I know that's really weird, but um, that definitely happens with this. Like it loses some of the yellow and it turns more pink. I hope I can show you that as I'm swatching it, but um, yeah, definitely an interesting situation with that one. Probably my favorite matte in here is the shade Checkpoint, which is a beautiful purple. I love this type of color where it's like plummy. This one doesn't have too much depth to it. It still stays pretty bright. Um, and I just think it's a nice purple, not too, too warm. Um, it definitely looks purple, not pink, but it's not cool toned either. So I really love Checkpoint. Moving on to the gel liners. First, I want to show Decibel. This is a beautiful, rich, chocolatey, almost kind of reddened brown. It's a really beautiful color. I find all of the liners in here are very fall appropriate. And I like that they don't match the palette a hundred percent. Like, like these colors aren't found exactly tone for tone in the Berlin palette. Next, we have the shade Input. This is a rusty orange color. Another one, again, so good for fall. Like I said, I'm probably gonna use these as bases, so I really like that one. Next is the shade Vinyl. This is like a violet purple. It definitely has a warmth to it and not a lot of depth. It stays very colorful. There's almost like a slight gray to it, but that doesn't give this like a grayed quality too much. It's just the tiniest, tiniest tinge. I really like that one as well. And last is the shade Signal, which is like a foresty green. It's just slightly off from like a traditional, like classic green color. It has a little bit more maybe blue in it and it deepens up just a little bit, not as bright, but still definitely green, not a ton of neutrality to it. And last for the collection are the two liquid shadows. The first one, the gold is is Syntax. This is a really beautiful gold. I find this is best um, for like a flaky, kind of sheared out, textured sparkle, and it has this sheerness to it, so it's not gonna give you full opacity. You might be able to build it up to that. I haven't really played with it, but that's not how I would prefer to wear it, so. Um, yeah, I love the way that it goes on. And the other one is called Bandwidth, and this one is a pearly clear, but it kind of comes off a little silver. It gives a very wet look. Again, love this. These are both great for the inner corner to spotlight a halo eye. And like I said, they do dry down. So um, I love that they are gonna stay in place all day. Bandwidth is also awesome because in different lighting, it really does kind of disappear that 
that silver clear sparkle goes away when the light's not hitting it and is not there and then when the light hits it it shows up so definitely a nice like wet look product um anyway i hope that was helpful so let's get into the demo all right guys let's get started on this look i'm starting off so different than normal everything is outside of my comfort zone today i'm going to be taking two of the different gel liners and i'm actually going to be mixing them into one color i love this purple but i kind of want something deeper i have a feeling this is going to kind of pop a little bit more purple and then this brown shade called decibel is just so rich and so like lovely so I want to do both of those I'm just taking the back of a brush because that's what I have around me right now so that's what it's looking like on the back of my hand and I'm just gonna mix those two together and see what we get wow mixologist right here that's what I'm looking for I just wanted something a little more grounded than colorful so I made it myself and I think for this I'm gonna start putting it on with like a flat shader brush and then I'm gonna use a clean brush to blend out I've never used the gel liners from them, so I don't really know how they perform, what the best like thing should be or would be. So we'll see how they go. I've put it down and this is kind of a big brush, but it's kind of dense. So I'm gonna just start blending that out and I'm working one eye at a time. Again, I just don't know the formula, how fast it dries, all of that. So I wanna be able to give myself the time I need to do the blending I want to. Really love the color though. I'm very happy with that custom mix. And then as I feel like I need more, I wanna like deepen things up. I'm just going back in with the brush, tapping it on, and then going right back in with my blending brush and just starting to blend. Probably a little too big, honestly, but I'm making it work. This is pretty dark, so sorry about that. I feel pretty good about where everything is. I mean, this is just kind of our base. We're gonna go on with other shadows too, but I do find this dries down. You get a decent amount of time to work with it, but it's gonna definitely kind of solidify into place. Now going into shadows, lots of mattes in here. I think, I don't know, it's so tough. I'm like tempted to use this like really pretty mustard. Um, but I think first I'm gonna go in with the brown just because I am nervous of how purple and yellow are gonna look. It might turn a little gray. You know, they might start canceling each other out. And I'd like not to ruin my look, at least not immediately. So I'm gonna go in with brown first, which is THF. And this is just going on in like the actual crease of my eye. And I'm just starting to blend out even more and really clean up that edge we have with the base. I've decided I do wanna take the tiniest bit of that yellow and I'm putting this in that upper brow bone area. I'm tapping off my brush. I'm really concentrating it right under here. I'm gonna be using a gold later and I feel like something about adding this kind of warmth on that inner part, like I already like it better. There's just something a little elevated about it. And I'm kind of bringing that to like the halfway point, almost to like the peak of my eyebrow. And now I do want to go in and like just amp up the purple on the lid with the purple shadow in here called Checkpoint. So that's going to just go on the lid and I'm starting to like just kind of wiggle my brush. We have so much like laid down already because of those bases. I don't need to do much. I just thought this would really amp up that purple. And I'm really keeping that to the lid, blend it out with that brown, with that yellow up here. I'm really liking it. I'm surprised how it's looking. Very velvet, kind of deep and sultry, but I like it. I do want a brow bone color and I don't really have one from the palette. So I'm going to go in with just my Nabla highlighter and I'm just dusting it on this back half and on the yellow a little bit where we've had it. I feel like it'll tie in. And I'm also going to take a little bit of the gold in here called Reunion and that's going to go as almost a transition into the brow bone as well, just kind of on the edge there. We're going pretty creative today, okay. <laughs> For the inner corner, I'm gonna use this shimmery liquid eyeshadow in Syntax. This is a beautiful gold, so glittery, so shimmery. I'm hoping it'll be a nice color there. And I'm just using a small brush 
and I'm gonna apply it with the brush. It's kind of a flaky situation. I'm just gonna build it up to what I want. I decided to take the tiniest bit of the brown well, and mix with the purple of the matte shades. And I'm just barely tucking that under the eye, right in the outer corner. It's just to line it up, just the tiniest bit. All right guys, so here is the final look. We are doing purple and yellow contrasting colors. I love the inner corner. I really wanted it to be kind of, I don't know, I thought of like scattered stars. And even with this look, I was kind of going for, you know those like sad old girls? Uh, they kind of look like 1920s, but they just have like really heavy upper eyes and like there's something kind of dreamy, you know, but they look kind of sad. That's what I was hoping I'd get from this look and I do think I overall achieved it. I'm glad I didn't add too much on the bottom. I went all matte, man. I didn't put a bunch of shimmers on the lid, which don't get me wrong, I am so tempted to do. But I'm glad I kind of pushed out my comfort zone, created something I was not expecting and I hope you guys enjoyed the look. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the look and seeing how I created it. It was definitely a process. Overall, in the end, it did capture my goal of something velvet. I added that yellow in last minute and I really like that addition. I think it I think it turned out well. It it takes it from something kind of basic to a little more elevated, a little bit more, I don't know, it has like a je ne sais quoi, you know, when you add that yellow in. I thought I would leave you off with some thoughts after using it a little bit more and kind of some pros and cons, I guess you could say. So first, I do find the color story still challenging. Like after using it, after having it, I do think it's pretty and I think that it is very useful if you're piecing this palette out and you're looking at it as like, oh, I'm gonna use this brown and then use a different shimmer on the lid or if you do simple looks maybe where you're only really using one or two colors maybe this would work for you or if these are your shades obviously take that into account but for me it's definitely still a challenging color story it just is a hard one for me to wrap my brain around so I will definitely be using this as a companion palette I'm thinking about using it even for things like this so this is my flare palette from it's bell and I could definitely see me using like the yellow in here and pairing it with one of these shades or using the blue in here and pairing it with these or or even the brown or the gray you, you get where I'm going right so um, I definitely think of it that way so even once having it I still haven't quite unlocked it in my brain 100% yet. I will say I love seeing a multi-chrome in the palette. I think that's like a fun addition. I really don't love the shimmer in transit. There's just something about it. It's a little bit powdery, which is not my favorite color for sure. Something else I wanna note is these are magnetic. So you can pop these out, um, which is great. They aren't the size of their normal single shadows, which I really wish that they were just so that way you could buy this palette. And I think for me, since I'm already thinking of piecing it out essentially in my brain, for how I'm gonna use it as looks. It'd be awesome if these were the same size as the other singles so I could take these out and then I could mix them in with my other shadows. I could also use this outer packaging if I really liked it and move those shadows in here and you know how I do with like creating stuff. I definitely wish that they had done that. I know there are other palettes that are themed and created have the regular size shadows in them so I kind of wish that was the case with this one but at least they are removable. I think that is a nice one if you want to you know add them to your own single collection or whatnot. Really easy to depot instead of being a hassle. Although there are tons of mattes in here, I will say I do enjoy the matte formula from Lethal. I actually like it a little bit better than most of the shimmers actually. Um, some are really beautiful and textured and sparkly, but I do think that a big standout for them are their mattes and they do colors really well. Out of the like single shadows I've tried also I've enjoyed them. So definitely you gotta love mattes though if you're gonna get this palette. Those are just some of my thoughts on that one. As for the liners, I think I'll probably use these most as bases like I did today. They're definitely pretty hardcore. Like they have great pigment. I feel like you can blend them out definitely, but they will dry down. So, you know, make sure you're you're blending them out with care. But I didn't have any issues blending out really at all. I think that this shade in Decibel is just so unique and rich and beautiful. Um, and they have so many amazing and different liner shades. So if you're someone who does eyeliner, gel eyeliner, or those types of looks, these might be a really great pickup for you. And then last on the liquid eyeshadows, probably my favorite part of the collection, probably no surprise. I think these are really nice and I haven't used liquid shadows actually in a while. These ones are really quite beautiful. They're definitely that kind of like PC as in 
pieces <laughs> of shimmer. They're kind of flaky, but these do dry down. So you're definitely gonna get some longevity out of these. I suggest using a finger and like tapping them up and building them up. I haven't tried to get like a really opaque look with these yet, but that's not really the style I would wanna go with ever on these. So I'm not sure how they would perform that way, but if you're trying to get something that's just some sparkle, I do think you can build it up to a really nice sparkle like I, I love the way it looks on my inner corner and I like that it's actually gonna stay there because it dries down and, and it stays so I think I might actually pick up a couple of these I know they have some other colors in the liquid shadow so I might pick up a couple of those <laughs> because <laughs> I'm gonna pick some stuff up with my own code before it expires. The pre-made palette I really want is that neon one, the After Dark palette. I've wanted that one for a while, so I think I'm gonna pick that one up with my code. Even though I have a few of the shades and singles, I think I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> I'm also tempted by the Velvet Dusk, I don't know. And really those are more my color stories than this, but you know, I wanted to push myself out of my comfort zone, so sometimes that's just fun, right? Like, I did a lot of stuff different today. I haven't used liquid eyeshadows in forever. I haven't used like gel liners as a base in I don't know how long, and I stuck to just using this palette, except for my highlight on my brow bone. I'd love to know what you guys' thoughts on this collection are. I definitely think they nailed the inspiration, but it's, it's a tough one. I would love to know if you see this palette and you just see all of the possibilities with it, I'd love to know what are some of the looks that you think about doing first, why this palette worked for you, what clicks for you about it. Um, I would love to just know. I just wanna like hear your thoughts on it because it's always so interesting to me what palettes get us and what palettes don't and it's all so different for different people. Anyway, more than anything, I hope this helped you. If you were looking into this palette, decide if it's gonna work for you or if it's gonna be a pass for you. Again, I will just say that the code Lauren does expire on October 31st. So if you want to pick anything up, you will get 20% off. That doesn't include bundles. So keep that in mind, but it does work on the new collection. So yeah, thanks so much for everyone who has used my code. I do really appreciate it. Other than that though, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I will see you in the next one.